Good evening. This is the Planning and Zoning Commission for the Village of Vernon Hills, and we need to start with a roll call. Commissioner Cotton. Here. Commissioner Lease. Here. Commissioner Nabbitt. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. And Chairman Morris. Here. Okay. Um, I don't know what general public comments are, but we have two items this evening for review, two public hearings. The first being case 23-02, a petition filed by Smoke and Deal Barbecue LLC to operate a retail store within the ORD district located at 1007 Butterfield Road. And who is going to speak on behalf of this petition? I will. Okay. Anybody else or just you? Just myself. Okay. We ask you to come forward, please. <clears throat> and since this is a public hearing, if you could raise your right hand and swear or affirm that this testimony you're about to give before this commission of the village of Vernon Hills shall be the truth. I, I swear. You have to say yes. Right. Yes. Okay. The primary rule is you have to speak from microphone because this is being recorded. Uh, either the portable one, which I don't see, uh, or the ones that are on the podium. Okay. So okay. with that, you are on. Well, first and foremost, thank you for allowing me to spend a little bit of time with you this evening. I realize it's late, uh, probably not ideal to be talking about barbecue at this point, but uh, nonetheless, certainly, uh, again, very grateful to be here, and, and more importantly, Mr. Jennings, who has been amazing in terms of a resource, a sounding board, somebody that really has been uh, beyond valuable in, in way of this process. First time for me going through this. So um, I thought I would start out with uh, just a little bit of overview about the business that I'm involved in, uh, a little bit about my background and sort of the plan, and do all this in, you know, four minutes and 40 seconds or less or something along those lines to stay in, uh, in alignment with what Andrew has identified. Uh, are you controlling the slides? Do I do it? I, the ability, I can do it, but you also have the ability. You can okay. forward on the mouse. We're just hitting just, down arrow on the keyboard. There you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, this is a depiction of the unit itself. It's, uh, it's facing north on Butterfield Road. It's the northeast section, um, or view is northeast section there. Uh, sorry, that wasn't my slide, but a little bit of, a, little bit of an introduction as to who we are, what we've done, uh, how we've grown the business, uh, essentially how we built this from ground up, created something from nothing. A little bit about the outlook for the industry, what's going on in the outdoor space, particularly lifestyles have changed, particularly after the pandemic and COVID. Uh, what the, home, the future home of 1000 Butterfield would look like, uh, the special use permit that I'm seeking tonight, and then leave enough time for question and answer. A uh, little bit of background about myself. I spent almost 30 years in corporate America working for Fortune 10 publicly traded companies, a variety of different roles from sales operations, marketing, national accounts, so forth. Uh, pretty solid uh, exposure in terms of distribution and warehousing, so that's the expertise I bring to the equation. Uh, we were founded almost 10 years ago. Uh, next year it'll be 10 years with Smoke and Eel Barbecue. Uh, previous location, we operated out of the Bannockburn or Deerfield area. Prior to that, we were in Highwood. We've grown exponentially over the last, really, uh, 10 years or so, and this would be typically or, or technically, I guess, our fourth location uh, that we've operated out of. We don't have another three. Uh, we're going from about 3,200 square feet to about 7,000. Uh, I mentioned a little bit about the fact that we have seen a tremendous increase in demand as it relates to outdoor lifestyle experience, and as a result, that has forced us to really rethink and strategize our position and where we need to be in the next five to 10 years. Uh, we do have some constraints, no surprise. 3,200 square feet, we're very, very limited in terms of warehousing and for showroom capabilities. Uh, there are some other additional concepts that I'd like to introduce tonight that will include or involve uh, more traffic, if you will, into the store, uh, a lot more opportunities for training, a lot more opportunities for exposure, if you will, to uh, outdoor cooking and barbecue and, and the like. Um, a couple of images just of, of sort of the equipment that we were talking about. Uh, we do a lot of built-in work, a lot of outdoor island work, uh, uh, outdoor lifestyle, again, hardscape projects. That has become sort of the new norm, if you will, for um, outdoor recreation over the last three or four years. Uh, more and more people are using, using their patios for entertainment versus, unfortunately, dining out as much as they used to. Uh, we also support a lot of the uh, competition barbecue teams, a lot of the professional teams that compete on a uh, weekly basis around the country, and we have a variety of equipment that's specifically designed for that kind of use. 
uh, other lifestyle uh, grills and smokers and outdoor hoods and ranges and griddles and things like that. A little bit about the industry. Uh, my apologies, this is cut off a little bit and it's a lot of data, but uh, essentially the messaging here is that it is a very popular space. Uh, there are a lot of drivers, a lot of factors that go into the selection of a particular piece of equipment. Uh, we do pride ourselves on supporting and stocking and putting items on the floor that are predominantly US made, US manufactured. That has been our model from the get go. It continues to be our model today. We will certainly support some products that are made overseas, but that's generally not what we find on our floor. Uh, but again, the market is growing exponentially. Uh, this is one sort of snapshot. Another one that I like to point out is the $22 billion industry growing to $26 billion in the next uh, several years, or a compound annual growth rate of almost 20%. And the comment below, due to stress lifestyles, outdoor activities such as camping and living in the great outdoors has become popular recently. People nowadays value social interaction and healthy lifestyle. It would push sales into the market. Uh, I think you've seen the photo already, but that's uh, another picture, if you will, showing the front of the building and uh, the side. And again, the two uh, areas that we're looking for consideration on this evening is uh, a special usage permit to operate a retail store, barbecue and grill supply store, and then secondarily within that space, we are hoping to incorporate a freestanding island, uh, effectively what kind of island, That's the type of island you might see outside in your backyard or your patio, but that would be an indoor application. <clears throat> and that indoor application would be used for purposes of training, uh, supporting the particular product line for manufacturers to come in and, and help explain the products. And then again, potentially as we uh, look for growth and, and incremental opportunities, We'd like to open that up for maybe other companies and other um, uh, groups, if you will, for after hours, meaning when the store closes around 5 or 5.30, we open it up to a private event. Are you suggesting you need a separate permit from us for the indoor grill island, or are you just talking about a license from the city or the village? My understanding was the current location is not zoned for retail, and I would have to seek some kind of special permit to be able to put this indoor island inside the unit. That, that particular permit is, is a building permit. Right. Okay. That's, uh, that's currently the depiction of what the floor plan would look like, inclusive of this grilling island, uh, seating for about 12 to 14 people inside the existing showroom space. And again, uh, set up and designed for purposes of training and education and exposure to the, uh, the various products. I'm a big fan of Disney. Uh, Walt Disney likes to say, or like to say, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Uh, so I'm certainly here to answer any questions and help uh, clarify anything that we've talked about this evening. So for your, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. For your after hours events, are you proposing alcohol? If any alcohol would be served, I'm not suggesting it would be, but if it would be served, we would be providing it through a third party catering company with any kind of dram shop insurance. But generally speaking, we don't serve alcohol on the premises. Um, Andrew, would they need, um, there's a permit for third party, isn't, aren't, is alcohol, isn't there? Yeah, so I, in the future, um, uh, should this be approved, what I would suggest is just speak with us about the particulars. If it's a private event, you may not need anything uh, anything specific, but uh, just be in communication about the nature of any event, uh, and we can <coughs> determine if, if a liquor license is required and, and what, uh, what, what the uh, applicable rules would be. Very well. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Um, when you say you're going to do some sort of educational things, did you mean like you're going to have uh, like educational about your equipment, have people come in, or are you gonna offer like parties for, or cooking classes or things like that? Yeah, it's actually a combination of both. Uh, we've done a lot of classes or education where we will have a small group, 20, 25 people, and we invite them in and it's a, you know, it's a closed session. We bring in a vendor, we bring in a particular product line, and we actually do some live cooking on those particular pieces of equipment for those that are in attendance. They're getting educated, they're getting trained, they're also getting sort of tips and tricks on how to use the particular piece of equipment during the training. Okay, and one more general question. In, so for your grills, so do you guys, you lease them out like for commercial places and residential as well? Is that 
Yeah. Uh, we don't lease anything. We do work with third-party leasing companies if a buyer is a commercial rent. client and wants to put it in their restaurant. Um, and we do support that. We do, uh, we do work with a lot of commercial clients today. Thank you. Yes. Everything's inside, correct? Yes. Correct. Anybody else? Okay, there's no, um, this is purely at this point, Bailey, Black Bear would put it, their office buildings. Okay, and you're putting into now something that involves cooking. How are you handling waste and trash in an otherwise office building environment? Uh, part of our lease agreement with the uh, owner of the building includes now uh, dedicated space for a dumpster and for uh, a fenced-in area that would enclose the dumpster that we would be utilizing. Where is that on your site plan, or not really a site plan, your kind of site plan? Um, I believe it was on the document. My apologies. I okay. thought I submitted that with uh, my site plan and everything else. Uh, but the proposed area that the landlord has identified is this back section of the parking area. Um, Hawthorne Parkway, Butterfield, that's our location. They're talking about taking this area and putting a corral specifically for dumpster use. So you're talking about across West End Lane from the residential. Is that right? Correct. Will, they... Will the trash enclosure be screened? Is it just a dumpster or will it have complete screening? If it's across from, from residential, the, the residents shouldn't have to see that. Right. Um, our, I, I don't know the answer to that because yeah. I haven't gotten into that level of detail with the broker's realtor who is here. If I could, I can certainly ask her that same question if they have any specifics around what that uh, dumpster corral would look like. If I could just interject on that point, there, there is a uh, requirement in the zoning code um, within the ORND district, and I sent the specifications uh, to the landlord so they, they are aware of the style of enclosure that's required, as well as some of our recommendations for uh, reinforcing the, the posts for the gates. Do you need any additional information from the You're realtor? Welcome to come up if you'd like. Yeah. Can I identify yourself first? Uh, I'm Cindy Dixon. I'm the broker for the landlord. Can I raise your right hand, please? Okay. Would you swear or affirm that this testimony you're about to give before this commission in the village of Vernon Hills shall be the truth? Yes. Okay. Now. Okay. So we did get the link from Andrew regarding the specifications, and the landlord said, yes, he will submit a separate permit and build the trash corral or garbage corral according to the specifications in your link. Um, the, what they were doing is putting it where there used to be one, but that one became a little dilapidated, so they had torn it down. It wasn't being used, so now they were just going to replace it with a new one. We understand it needs to be seven feet high, I think, and either block or I can't remember what it was, but he, they're, they're going to submit a permit and have so going So should for this it. be approved, a condition of approval would be that the screening of the, that any Recommendation or approval will be subject to the screening of the trash per the village code? Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay. What about, so you don't go away, the <laughs> other question that staff had was with respect to, is there additional rooftop equipment going on because of the ventilation from what we're referring to as the island? Is there additional? I'm going to jump in. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we have planned to incorporate a commercial hood okay. inside of the building that would then have black pipe or black iron up through to the ceiling. And then on top of the ceiling, there would be a smoke evacuator with an 1100 CFM fan to be able to extract any potential smoke that would be coming out. Okay, so is that going to be also subject to a condition of approval that uh, it would not be visible from the ground and would be screened like all of our rooftops are through the village? That is what I understand, correct. Yes. Okay, and because you are now, what you just described, adjacent to essentially a residential, what comes out of that? It would simply be any fumes, if you will, from cooking. Okay. Do we have an idea, Andrew, like what that means? I think uh, given, the, given the frequency of the use proposed here, uh, staff didn't have as much of a concern with 
the uh, ventilation. We do have restaurants uh, mm -hmm. that do have um, uh, this type of equipment um, all over. Uh, in this particular case, the location, my, my biggest concern was we might be able to see it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we would absolutely be able to work with them uh, regarding uh, any requirements for it. Okay. There what, we go. Yeah. What about um, if it is in you know an office park? What about the odor? Um, you know, if you you know if you walk into the movie theater, you immediately smell that popcorn. Mm -hmm. If you walk into this area, you're going to immediately smell the barbecue. Yeah, um, again, we're not a restaurant, so we're not operating 12 hours a day, burning, you know, and, and cooking. Um, this is a, not a, you know, it's not gonna be an everyday use. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Want to add anything at this juncture? Uh, no, but thank you. Thank you for the consideration. Thank you for the support. Hopefully we've answered the questions. If there are additional questions or clarity you seek, we're. Happy to address those. Okay, since this is a public hearing at this juncture, if anyone from the public wishes to speak with respect to this request for a special use, this would be the opportunity and time. Okay, seeing no great rush to the podium, we can close the uh, portion for public comment as a public hearing. Um, I do note that notices were provided and it looks like we received no feedback or comments from anyone. Um, secondly, I note that you've provided section 18.3 comments uh, with respect to the discussion of standards for special use. Um, I would note that your response to standard number one actually is probably technically incorrect where you say you were surrounded by commercial businesses. That's only partially true because as you've established to the east are residential units. Um, but other than that, the standards that are accompanied into our you know, specific findings this evening. Any other from the commission? Okay, as you may know, the commission has a standing motion to recommend approval. So it would be to make findings of fact and recommend approval of a special use for a retail store for the property located at 1007 Butterfield Road as required by section 15.3, article 18 and section 21.6 as described in the application submitted by Smoke and Deal Barbecue LLC dated March 1, 2023 and to be in substantial conformance with the following plans. The narrative dated March 1st, the site plan for 1000 Butterfield, and the floor plan for Suite 1007, subject to the conditions of approval within the staff report, as well as the two additional subject conditions of approval this evening, the screening of the trash enclosure per the village code, and the rooftop screening and mechanicals through the village code. Okay, anything else from anybody? Okay, now we need a second for that motion. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, my only discussion is this. Um, my vote here this evening is predicated on the fact that this is a singular discussion as it relates to a special use for this particular use in this particular area. The reason I say that is uh, I do not necessarily believe that 15.3.7, which is a special use in the ORD, uh, would necessarily apply uniformly to retail. That section is intended primarily to serve the immediate convenience needs of persons employed in the area. Okay, I think that's a very high standard. This one I think may not reach it, but gets close enough for purposes of this particular use because of its low intensity of use. But I would not necessarily suggest that if it was an actual retail store that is taking from the larger area not from the convenience of the needs of the people employed within the ORD district, that I would vote yes on it. So um, the bottom line is I think you meet the special use individually for this use, but not more generally for uh, retail. And therefore, I don't think this is precedential at all for the commission regarding retail and ORD. Okay, anybody else? If not, I think we could use a roll call. We have a. Sorry. Oops, I'm, I'm going to be the one who's going to need that on later when I do the minutes. <laughs> um, we have a motion, uh, standing motion uh, by the chair, Commissioner Morris, uh, Chairman Morris, and seconded by Commissioner Cotton. Uh, Commissioner Cotton? Yes. Commissioner Lease? Yes. Commissioner Nabbitt? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. And Chairman Morris? Yes, subject to my comments. Okay, so congratulations, and where does this go next? 
We will be assembling the, uh, the minutes, uh, and I'll be in touch with the petitioner. Uh, this will go on to the village board. Uh, the, the, we've discussed dates. I'll, I'll be in touch with you regarding the exact date. Okay. Uh, it depends on the turnaround time and availability on that agenda. So the next place <coughs> uh, for anyone following along with this would be a committee of the whole discussion with the village board. Uh, those meetings are on Tuesday nights. Okay. okay. We will await further direction from you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next this evening, we have a public hearing for case 2023-4, uh, a petition filed by Hoskin Enterprises uh, requesting approval of First Amendment to the zoning code to include a definition of catering establishment and to add that use as a special use in the OR&D district. And then secondly, pursuant to that amendment, should it pass a special use permit to operate a catering establishment within the OR&D district. This property is 1017 Butterfield Road, around the corner from where we just discussed. And who's going to speak for the petitioner on this one? Could you come forward then, please, sir? Hey, why don't you identify yourself for us? Hi, I'm Michael Proskin. Hey, is anyone speaking other than you? Just me. Okay. Could you raise your right hand and swear or affirm that this testimony you're about to give before this commission of the Village of Vernon Hills shall be the truth? Yes. Okay, hey, you are on. Okay. I'm Michael Proskin. Uh, my wife and I own uh, Catered Productions in Libertyville. We uh, purchased the business back in 1996, and um, we've outgrown the, uh, our current space. Uh, we're looking to move to the uh, 1017 Butterfield location and build a, uh, basically it's a, a production kitchen. Uh, we do only off-premise catering. We do not invite uh, the public or uh, have any um, uh, walk-in people. We're not a restaurant at all. And um, again, we'd uh, love the opportunity to move to uh, Vernon Hills. Okay. Um, there are two things before the commission this evening. First is a text amendment to insert the definition of catering service mm -hmm. uh, within the definition section. Is catering service going to appear anywhere other than as a special use in the OR&D district? It looks like no. At this time, the only, uh, the only zoning district where this would uh, come into play would be uh, in the OR&D district as a special use. Okay, with respect to the definition that we have, um, the question I have is the last sentence, same day phone orders similar to a carryout restaurant are now permitted. Because of the nature of this particular business that's going to ask for a special use in a moment uh, from us under that provision, is, is that a workable? In other words, what if there is an unexpected event that someone needs catering? They can't call and say, you know, I need to come pick it up, you know, this afternoon, can you help me? So the verbiage of, uh, uh, I've been working with Mr. Proskin on, on the places within the zoning code where, uh, mm -hmm. where this would be inserted, and, and the verbiage of this is something that I've been working on, on uh, uh, with the uh, petitioner. Uh, the same day phone order distinction was basically just trying to uh, draw, a, uh, draw the, the distinction between a carryout restaurant and catering. So uh, they do have the ability to deliver uh, mm -hmm. same day, but the idea here was to uh, discourage pickup and carry out. Um, so that, that was the, the purpose of it. Is your business, for lack of a better way to put it, and I apologize if I say it wrong, no. is it really like a bulk type of business versus an individual order business? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, we <laughs> really discourage the smaller events, and um, most of our catering menus are based on minimums of, of 12 is like our, our very smallest. But uh, again, a vast majority of the events we do uh, range from 50 people and up. And, and again, um, we're not the type of business that um, have very many people that come in to pick up food. Um, you know, every once in a while we'll have someone that'll call the day before, and they'll say, can I pick up uh, a dozen, uh, say, lunch boxes, you know, and, and uh, but it, it's not, that's not very common. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, an idea of the, the spectrum of what we do. 
Uh, during COVID, we had a call from a local hotel and they asked if we were working because they had a large group coming in. And we said, yes, we were you know, available. Um, we ended up serving 20,000 meals over a two month period for the National Guard that were hired to, um, to uh, man the, at the time, COVID testing stations. So that kind of gives you an idea. We do you know, large events and they're all off, off premise. Okay, I, my concern, Andrew, is, is this a limitation that could be used against some of the planned uses here? Or, you know, is it maybe as simple as saying same day, you know, non-bulk, you know, phone orders, you know, are not permitted or something like that? I, I think one suggestion, I, I hear your point. So uh, I think one suggestion I would have for that is if you strike the last sentence, this particular business is requesting a special use. There, it, given the location, it may be appropriate in another spot for a restaurant to offer catering. Uh, so if you strike the last sentence, in, this, in the ORND district, what's being suggested is a special use. They could certainly have a condition of that special use, given the location, that, that uh, they would operate primarily with bulk and not have, uh, not have a carry-out type function. And we could put something like, you know, single order carry-out is not permitted as, yeah. as a condition. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, again, it's, um, you know, we do not at all promote um, pickup orders or carry out orders at all. Um, it's, I just don't want to put you in a position that, you know, somebody calls and says, you know, I have this, you know, unexpected meeting and I need, you know, make up a number, 25 lunches. Sure. Can I get them this afternoon? Oh, and, and one of your neighbors says, I just read the zoning orange, can't do that. Sure. Okay. So we, we get, um, we, we do get, uh, a fair, well, I should, shouldn't even say a fair amount, but we do get some same day sure. phone calls for um, corporate uh, lunches, things like that, but it's all, we, we deliver everything. You know, everything is brought to the offices. So could, could we state something like um, uh, establishments, um, does not include establishments uh, with uh, similar to carry out restaurants? Just put it in the negative as to what it doesn't <coughs> include, since carry out restaurants is what we're trying to avoid. There are definitions in the zoning code that have a statement like that to say does not include, you know, you could say does not include a carry out restaurant. Uh, th that's something that could be done. Uh, it would really be up to the commission how you want to make this recommendation. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So basically, if somebody were to call you and say, I, I need a fruit tray, you know, I know what they're getting at, but I need a fruit tray. Can you, ha I, you know, we, I have an emergency, I have to sure. go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, you'd be able to deliver that, they just wouldn't be able to pick it up. Fine, yeah, and, and I would be fine with, um, you know, if, if you wanna put a restriction on the license, not allowing people to come in and pick up, because we do very, so, few pickup orders, it's, it wouldn't affect us. You want to be prohibited from that? Pardon me? No. I don't know if you really want to be prohibited from well, that. Again, I, I, I'm not sure how the legal verbiage would work, but again, we do so I few pickup orders that, again, if it were that big of a sticking point, I would, uh, I, I would uh, go along with it. This is more for the commission than yourself at this point, mm -hmm. and for Andrew. What if we delete the last sentence and we encompass the discussion we're having in the condition for the approval of the special use, assuming that it's permitted? Does that do it? Yeah, I, I think that if you take it off, if you take it out of the generic, uh, not the generic, but the, the general definition that's going to apply to yeah. any catering establishment in town and put it in the particulars of the special use, I think that makes perfect sense. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to we're going to consider the text amendment, so you know, mm -hmm. uh, to be without that last sentence, but still describe your business and then accommodate what we're talking about okay. in the conditions for approval, assuming there is an approval um, of the special use itself. Okay. Okay. So let's do this in, I guess, steps. So the first question we have before us is the definition. 
The second is to insert that definition within the section 15.3 in the ORD district. So it would be a special use only within OR and D. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion with respect to that? Okay, because we're doing this in part, since this is a public hearing, uh, first with respect to the zoning code text amendment, does anyone from the public wish to speak with respect to the text amendment relating to the catering service definition? and then inserting catering service as a special use in the OR&D district in subsection 15.3.9, if you're following along. Okay, seeing once again no great rush to the podium with respect to that, we can close the public comment section there. Um, I assume notices went out and all the other stuff. Yes, yep, it yes. did. Okay, so why don't we then first vote on that because if we don't say yes to that, the second one becomes moot. Can I ask a of question? Of course. Yeah. And this is just a general question. Sure. Do you have um, on-site tastings? We do allow on-site okay. tastings. And um, again, most of our tastings are for um, future weddings. Right, that's what I was And say. yes, and then so we would have the bride and groom come in. We do have a small like little showroom mm -hmm. that we have them come in and sit down and then you know we, we serve them the, the meal. Okay. Um, those are typically, all of our, uh, our tastings are held between the months of, um, mostly between January and February. Mm -hmm. Those are slower times for the summer Wedding. weddings right. upcoming. Okay, no, mm -hmm. I was just, I just was trying to understand yeah. your business model sure. a little, bit, a mm -hmm. little bit more. Yes. Okay, we also have in our packet with respect to the standards for zoning text amendment, um, which are described uh, with respect to the comments by the staff, and those are also part of our record. Anyone else have any comments with respect to the text amendment? Okay, we, why don't we vote on that then first? So we would have a motion, let me get to the right motion, um, to make findings of fact and recommend approval of a zoning code text amendment in accordance with section 21.7 of the zoning code as described in the application by Proskin Enterprises to amend the zoning code as follows. To one, amend section 3.2 definition to insert the definition included in the packet but without the last sentence reading same day phone orders similar to a care at restaurant are not permitted. So that's not part of the definition. And two, to amend section 15.3 special uses in the or and district to insert catering services as subsection 15.3.9. So we need a second for that, please. Second. Okay, any discussion? And we need a roll call. I have a standing motion by Chairman Morris, okay. a second by Commissioner Lease. Commissioner Lease? Yes. Commissioner Cott? Yes. Commissioner Nabbitt? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. And Chairman Morris? Yes. Okay. So with that, we can move on to the second question, which is your request now for approval of a special use permit to operate a catering service in the R&D district pursuant to what is now the definition of a catering service. Um, you heard probably some of the questions we had before. Yes. So why don't you address, and you may need you know, your friend to sure. come back up and be sworn in again. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So I... We'll have a, uh, um, a uh, trash structure built also, similar to what Jeff had uh, um, suggested. Um, we'll also be building a, um, an exhaust hood, HVAC. Um, we do cook you know, on premise, but again, every, all the food and everything is delivered um, to the locations. Um, we currently don't even do any grilling on site. Uh, we do have convection ovens and um, a fryer, small fryer. Um, I think I've got pictures. Andrew, can I? Uh, you, how do if I? You advance it. You'll get to those eventually. I think all of your pictures are in there somewhere. Okay. I can also just advance it if that's easier. Yeah, uh, there we go. There's just again some off off premise, which is all we do. All right, here's a little bit of um, our, our current space. Here's uh, a good view of our kitchen. Again, there's convection ovens, there's refrigeration, there's no grilling at all. We do have a stove top um, and a fryer to the right of the, uh, the uh, eight burner stove. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So 
In regards to this building that you're going to be moving into, mm -hmm. former restaurant owner here. Yes. Do you have to do a complete full build out with drainage and everything? And yeah, I believe so. Yeah, wow. and, and we're currently uh, meeting with the uh, architect and, and getting all those drawings uh, put together and, and the layout and all that. Okay. Yeah. A lot. Okay. Any other cool pictures you want to show us? Yeah, let's see if. Uh, uh, yeah, again, it's more just uh, our refrigeration and. work this thing. I can do okay. it. Oh, 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 there we go. We had a... Oh, God. No. Oh. We don't do dress rehearsals. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so the two questions that were asked before, one is with respect to the trash enclosure, and that I think you've addressed. Yes. Okay, that it's going to be pursuant to the village standards, et cetera. The yeah. second one is with respect to are there additional rooftop mechanicals that will be required, and then they will need to be screened pursuant to the village code as well. Okay, and there was some mention in the... Uh, staff report, and I apologize, I don't know exactly where, about vehicles. Are you storing vehicles then on the site? Uh, we would park our vehicles, um, again, typically, so right now where we're at, we're in a, a strip mall in Libertyville, uh -huh. and all of our um, uh, delivery vehicles are parked behind our space. Okay. So we would, um, you know, we would park the uh, delivery vans and what, there's four of them? Wherever. Like there, uh, there, there's, uh, we have five currently. I know, Andrew, we've had issues with some of the businesses along 60, parking delivery vehicles in such a way that they've become de facto signs. Is there addressed here? Is there an issue here? I, I, that is not allowed by the code. I would suggest a reference to it actually as a condition of approval that the vehicles not be utilized as signage. Um, Parking them up against uh, Butterfield Road, for example, would be construed as uh, using them for advertising. There are there are other commercial vehicles at this property. It is a light industrial slash office uh, complex primarily. So there are uh, at least two that I could think of that have uh, commercial vehicles already. Um, so it is not uncommon here. Um, and the, the suggestion that I had made in the staff report is that acknowledge that they do have commercial vehicles and allow some increase in the number of vehicles uh, without that having to come back because typically a special use would refer to the application and if they had limited themselves to five in the application, there wouldn't be much flexibility for us to allow them to expand their fleet. Okay, okay. And then the staff report also notes that there's a question about the location of the proposed trash enclosure. Where is that going or will be going? May I answer? Sure, okay. of course. So mm -hmm. You're still sworn in for okay. <laughs> So we're actually, we have that in the lease. I should have mentioned that. That's in the lease with Smoke and Deal Barbecue that we will, the landlord, not me, the landlord will create that enclosure. And it's the same one. It's just making it large enough to accommodate this tenant and mm -hmm. Smoke and Deal Barbecue and any other tenant in the first building that would require it. So Got it. It's, so it's where it was before. Mm -hmm. um, they're just going to add. Put it back. Put it back. Okay. Better. <laughs> so, so quick question Thanks. about, you mentioned you have a fryer. Um, what kind of grease disposal are you going to have for the fryer changing out the grease? Are mm -hmm. you going to have grease disposal on site, yeah. or are you going to have that same day removal of the used grease? Yeah. So we have a, um, a, a grease uh, receptacle behind our building. Uh, it's uh, Mahoney Environmental that, that uh, we have the um, contract with. And they... Um, you know, I'll be honest, uh, <laughs> they don't pick up on a regular basis because we don't go through that much. And um, again, we could arrange for like, a, if, if the timing is a, an issue, I could arrange for like a, you know, once a month maybe. But again, we don't even do that much frying. Um, fried foods do not carry very well. It, uh, uh, you, you know, for catering, and they don't hold up very well, so we don't do a ton of frying either. But, um, you know, if, if that becomes a, uh, you know, if you'd like to see a certain grease pickup schedule, I'm sure we can make the arrangements. Are, are you going to, are you planning to co-locate that with the uh, dumpster refuse area, or are you going to 
I don't think there's really a way to put it behind this facility. Right. Yeah. I think that's what the property manager and the landlord were talking about was just making it large enough to accommodate it where the dumpsters were, which okay. will be covered. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Yeah, I don't yes. think we've even gotten to that point of discussion, no. but, um, but they were talking whatever about it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, yeah. the, uh, the 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 um, frying that we do is is minimal, and so um, you know wherever that grease receptacle has to be, we'll be happy to okay. to put it there. Andrew, is that something that would be picked up in the uh, building permit? Or the when uh, we when we work with somebody in a, um, a, a garbage enclosure, uh, we work with them on what type of uh, equipment might be in it. If there's a compactor, uh, some of the industrial buildings uh, do have compactors. We figure out is that indoors, outdoors, uh, and then based on what they need within this corral, we'll make sure it's appropriately sized. Uh, we'll probably have them map it out uh, between cardboard, uh, uh, general garbage and then a, a grease container. Okay, but that's reviewed though by... We would, we would review that, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I believe we currently have a, um, I think it's a 10-yard uh, garbage container and then a, I think it's a two and a half yard uh, recyclable cardboard container that we currently use. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else from the commission? Mm -hmm. I have one more question yes. regarding the garbage and the, you know, all, there's going to be two of you. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have some sort of regular pest control? Oh, yes. Yeah, we're, um, we, we have, uh, oh, I, I'm drawing a blank on the name, but they come in on a regular basis. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, I have another question mm -hmm. about the um, vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. I guess my concern would be is if they're parked on the one side of the building, it's by the residential, would we ever require screening? I suggest screening. Can you park right there? The, typically when we require screening for vehicles, they would be uh, larger, the, the step vans, that sort of thing that are smaller. Um, it certainly could be if it was in really close proximity, um, but it, it would be up to the, the commission to look at this location and decide if that was something that uh, you wanted to include in the recommendation. But typically where we see it is gonna be um, uh, semis, uh, vehicles with open equipment on them. Maybe the question then is, this is for you now. Okay. When we look at that parking field that goes primarily to the west, but also somewhat to the north of the building and then to the south of the building and the east of the other one, is this all shared parking or is it dedicated to a particular building? It's all shared. So it's all shared. It's all shared. So they could then utilize to park the vehicles that area that appears to the east of the other building on the south side of the site? East of the smaller building? Yeah. That's, the, that's the one that's because, closest to the residential. Yeah, so you're saying that's where it should be parked? No, I'm saying, or, but they could. I'm they not could, saying yes. Um, there's one tenant in the back there, um, a chiropractor. So it's pretty, but that's right where they were gonna put the corral as well, the trash corral. They could park them on the north side too. I mean, I would prefer, it would be nice if the residents didn't have to look at the vans. So they're suggesting that you would park your vehicles when not in use or probably overnight use on the potential north side, which would be um, to the north side of sure. your building. Is that an we'll issue? Be happy to park wherever we need to. Yeah. And, and that's visible from the street, so the, I'm assuming the police will not have an issue with that either. I, I wouldn't imagine. The, the commercial vehicles right now are parked. Um, I don't have a way to point, but they're right. parked uh, typically in the second aisle in, right, uh, not right up against Butterfield Road and not right up against the building. Right. Closer, they face the Public Works building. Right yes. Towards that end, the north end. So do you want to, are you suggesting a condition that they be in the north portion of that lot or that they not be in the portion that is quote unquote adjacent to the residential in the southeast quadrant? Uh, not be on the north side or the south side. The, it would 
essentially be on the Butterfield side, kind okay. of in front of their building. That's fine. Got it. Which okay. is, makes the most sense. And that's a long Butterfield. Yeah. So. Right. And so it's the. Just so I have a, a visual, are you um, suggesting basically kind of like in the middle of the lot on the on the uh, west west side, but not right along Butterfield? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe I think that's where the the I, I've seen vans parked in the in that area all the time, but in the middle, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Oops. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Any other? Got it. Any other comments from the commission? Okay. Once again, this is a public hearing, so at this juncture, if anyone from the public wishes to speak with respect to the request for a special use for a catering business, i.e. this catering business, within the ORD district at this location at 1017 Butterfield, this would be the time to speak. Okay, once again, seeing no great rush to the podium, we can close the public uh, comment section of the public hearing. I do note that, once again, uh, notices went out for this, correct? And we That's didn't get anything back? We did not. And I also note that you've provided Section 18.3 comments or standards for the special use. Um, they are a bit repetitive of simply the statement in the special use, but I believe that through your testimony this evening with respect to the use, you probably have sufficiently met the standards, or at least the explanation of the standards. So anything else from the commission? Okay. If not, we have a, as you heard earlier, a standing motion to recommend, which would be to recommend making findings of fact and approval of a special use for a catering service for the property located at 1017 Butterfield Road as required by section 15.3, article 18, and section 21.6 as described in the application by Proskin, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, mm -hmm. Enterprises, and in substantial conformance with the following plans and exhibits, the project narrative introduction letter, the site plan for 1000 Butterfield Road complex, the floor plan for suite 1017, and the conditions within our staff report, including the additional overlay that the parking of vehicles will not be utilized in a manner as signage and will be within the west lot but not along the Butterfield Road frontage, as well as also the trash and the rooftop mechanicals are subject to review as noted in our comments as well as conformance with the village ordinances and staff review. Did I miss anything? No. Did That's you add I vehicles? Did. Which what? Sorry. Did you add vehicles? I think we were going to add additional. I didn't hear that. Yeah, the two that I had uh, were similar to what uh, yeah. Chairman Mercer has listed. Vehicles not to be used in a manner construed to signage right. and shall be stored in the west slash center lot, uh, not the southeast uh, or west along Butterfield Road. Right. Did, did you suggesting the number? Well, I thought we were talking about adding, they said six or yeah. seven uh, vehicles, the, so the, we don't have to come back. There was a, in the draft motion, there was a condition that they could uh, increase up to a total of nine. nine. Right. That, yeah. Okay. That's, that's in our staff report already. Okay. Okay. Did, Any other, uh, Jerry? Were we supposed to add anything about um, the definition, the change in the definition? Yes, we were. Uh, and we spoke earlier when we changed the definition that this would be subject to that the um, that same day orders would be of a bulk nature, not a singular nature, similar to a carryout restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Is that kind of do it? Yep. Okay. Good catch. Okay. No, again, just to clarify, so um, typically um, we I don't think ever get same day requests to pick up food. Yeah. If they were to call like a day before or sure. two days before and say, hey, can I come in and pick up, uh, you know, and again, these are minimal uh, requests that we get. It doesn't happen very often. But um, just so I understand, um, if they were to call the day or two days in advance and say, can I come in on this day and pick up 10 box lunches or whatever, that's, uh, that would be allowed? I think that's a lot. I think what we're trying to get at mm -hmm. is that 
if I decide I'm working from home and you know, don't want to make lunch, sure. I can't call you up the day before and say, I'll be home tomorrow. Can I pick up a box yeah. lunch for myself? Yeah, yeah. No, so, no. Okay. We, we don't want that. <laughs> right. So, so maybe what we should say. <laughs> we, we, we would, okay. we, I mean, we would turn requests like that down. Nice. So, okay. yeah. So maybe what we should say is we should rephrase that, that take out even the same day, that phone orders for non-bulk orders similar to a carrot restaurant are not permitted? Just make it more general? Does that do it? Well, I guess my question would be what would constitute a bulk order? Is 10 box lunches a bulk order? To me, you know, so I, big family. yeah, so I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting and thinking, well, like a fruit tray for like a shiva or something yeah. like that, that's what I'm thinking. Sure. That could be a, uh, you know, a same day request. Yeah. And, and even stuff like that, we just, we don't promote it. Um, but you could deliver um, it. I'm sorry. You yeah, could. yes. Right. Um, and again, it may, may be cost prohibitive, but uh, honestly, I can't remember the last time we got a call requesting to come in and pick up a fruit tray or mm -hmm. a single tray of whatever. Oh. Um, we're just not that type of uh, business. It's just not, it's just not in our uh, mm -hmm. business model. No, so. so that's what I'm saying. I don't know. The, I kind of like what we had previously, because otherwise I feel we'd need to define bulk. Yeah, if you take the, uh, just as a suggestion, if you take the sentence that was cut from the definition and include that as a condition, same day phone order similar to a carry restaurant, uh, carry out restaurant are not permitted, I think that that pretty much covers what we need the, the same day. Phone order similar to a carry out yeah. restaurant yeah. would be fine. That yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll make that a condition. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hate to be picky here, but who orders by phone versus internet these days? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, that's a good <laughs> point. Orders uh, similar. <laughs> orders similar. Maybe just to orders. Yeah. 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 So that's a very good point. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So. 20 years ago, everything was by the phone, and now it's all. So. Okay. How does it read now since yeah. you took notes? Can I? Uh, yes, right. Yeah. Thanks. I just want to say something. Mm -hmm. that the restaurant person in me is coming out again. Yeah. But if you, would it be okay if. They do get an order for a fruit tray for if they could if, deliver it. But, I mean, if that's because that's considered an or the same day order, but they should be allowed to take that business and right. No, I it could be a thousand dollar fruit tray. You know, I mean, I think that's accepted. You know, <laughs> it'd be a very big fruit tray. Yes, it would yeah, be. That one right. we wouldn't turn down. Exactly. You see? <laughs> no, I think that's. I think even in the the new definition yeah. that that would have yeah. been allowed. So, so what do we have now, Andrew? Uh, orders notes? similar to a carry-out restaurant are not permitted. Mm -hmm. That would just be added as a condition. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if we all remember what the motion was, <laughs> do we have a second? <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. We need a roll call then, please. Okay. We have a standing motion by Chairman Morris, a uh, second by Commissioner Nabbitt. Cut. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing too many things at once. Um, okay. uh, we've got a, I'll just read that again, a standing motion uh, by Chairman Morris, a second by Commissioner Cotton. Uh, Commissioner Cotton. Yes. Commissioner Lease. Yes. Commissioner Nabbitt. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. And Chairman Morris. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. Good luck. And this next step is? Thank you. The next step will be a committee of the whole review of this uh, recommendation. Uh, give me a, a, a day to figure out the date. Uh, they are Tuesday evenings, um, typically not done on a, a quick turnaround where we do it the next week, mm -hmm. but uh, there may be some availability. So uh, let me assess the uh, agenda uh, mm -hmm. with the board and I'll be in touch with you. Okay. Thank okay. you, Andrew. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have approval of the Planning and Zoning Commission minutes for December 14th, 2022. Okay, we need a second for that. I think I'm the one that has to second it. Okay, so you will second it. We can do that by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Yes. Okay. That will pass. Then we have approval of Planning and Zoning Commission minutes for April 12th, 2023. We need a second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, we can do that by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. Anyone Aye. opposed? And those pass. Next, we have development review. Any development to review? You know, I did a, had a pretty healthy list at the last meeting. <laughs> um, not too much in the last two weeks, though. So happy to answer any questions that you have. Anything you're going to Chili's? 
Uh, nothing yet. Bailey's? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, no, no, nothing yet. The construction that, uh, that I referred to last time yeah. is clipping along. Uh, I suppose there is one, one note. The, um, uh, I had provided an update on the domain, which is the name of the residential portion of the mixed-use building at uh, Hawthorne Row. Uh, at our 12th meeting. Uh, in, in the last day, um, I've, I've given them the approval to, to commence their hard hat tours. Oh. Um, they had leased uh, the first handful of units sight unseen, probably 10 or so units were leased without any visit whatsoever. Uh, they now do have the ability by appointment only to take small groups uh, up to four people. Um, they, you have to meet at the trailer and be escorted over, uh, and there's only a, sp a sp specific part of the building uh, you'd be allowed to see, but uh, prospective tenants can actually view units now. Is, is the retail leased? Uh, the retail is not leased yet. They're, they're talking to tenants, but no one uh, has, has committed to a, a unit that I know of. Hmm. Did Martin Associates actually totally leave? I believe so. Um, I can I can check, That's but okay. I believe so. Okay, All right. Anything else, anybody? Okay. If now we have the most, you know, desired of all motions, the motion to adjourn. We need a second. Second. And we do that by acclamation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. We're adjourned. Good night. <laughs>